So Dr. Scholz, we've received a lot of questions regarding HIFU and also Tulsa Pro uh, on our YouTube channel, and I know we covered it lightly in the conference, but we kind of wanted to ask some more individual questions. So first of all, can you explain, let's start with Tulsa Pro, what this is and how the procedure works? So it's the same technology. HIFU and Tulsa Pro are the same technology, but with what's called HIFU, High Intensity Focused Ultrasound, that's what Tulsa Pro is as well. But what's different when they talk about doing HIFU and Tulsa Pro is that the, the HIFU technology uses a device that's put in the rectum and they fire through the rectal wall into the prostate to destroy prostate tissue or prostate cancer in the prostate. Tulsa Pro uses a device that's put in the urethra, which goes down the middle of the prostate and it fires outwardly to destroy prostate tissue or prostate cancer. So it's the same uh, idea of focused high ultrasound beams that when they cross, it creates so much um, energy that it actually burns the tissue. And that's a dis it destroys the tissue, burns it. And uh, the kind of cool thing is, is that if the transducer is right here firing this way because it's crossing beams, that you can fire past something like the rectal wall and not damage it, or you can fire past the urethral wall and not damage it. And so the destructive force is a distance from, the, uh, uh, from where the device is. And uh, this does have some limitations uh, because if there's heavy calcifications, it, the sound won't go past it. And there's only a, a certain maximum depth that you can go to. So really big prostates are not going to be very uh, amenable to this type of technology because you can only go so far. So it's the same exact thing. High intensity focused ultrasound, it's just a matter of whether they call it HIFU if it's uh, delivered through the rectum, past the rectal wall, whereas it's called Tulsa Pro if it's in the urethra, firing outward from the urethra. Well, on either side, HIFU or Tulsa Pro, what are the side effects related to that? You know, we're damaging tissue, so is there any sort of urinary issues, incontinence issues? Like any powerful tool, it's mostly determined by the skill of the operator and how ambitious the doctor is to, uh, how much tissue do they want to destroy. Uh, you can treat the whole prostate, and you can also do focal therapy, which means a section of the prostate where the tumor is. The side effects and the risks are much less when they treat a smaller area, and uh, they're much, they're, they're greater if you try and treat the whole prostate. Side effects, uh, you know, after you have a lot of destructed or destroyed uh, prostate tissue, uh, they put a catheter in for a week or two afterwards while this all heals up so that the urinary passage doesn't block off. But most of the problems are related to therapeutic misadventures where they fire the gun into the wrong area. So if they hit, uh, you know, hit, hit some other sensitive structure, then you can have problems. Uh, they try and stay away from the neurovascular bundles, and, and thus the hope of uh, reducing the risk of erectile dysfunction, uh, which has its pros and cons. Uh, if you do stay away from the, uh, the neurovascular bundles, there's going to be a lower risk of erectile dysfunction compared to surgery or radiation that cover those. Uh, but uh, many times, prostate cancers tend to lurk near the neurovascular bundles. There's also a possibility of leaving cancer behind if, uh, if you avoid the neurovascular bundles. So... Um, my experience with it is that it is pretty well tolerated, uh, that ED rates are, are less than surgery, and uh, men do seem to recover well. Uh, this is in the limited experience that I've seen from relatively uh, a small number of practitioners that I've seen the results from. Probably the biggest problem I've seen is when they um, are uh, not aggressive enough or don't cover enough tissue, and then they have relapses. So um, anytime some doctor is aiming to do a focal therapy, uh, they have to not only hit the target, but they have to hit a, hit a margin around the target and, uh, and make sure that they get adequate coverage. And, uh, and if it is uh, properly administered, it's effective. So, you know, you mentioned that it may not be uh, great for larger prostates. So what size prostate would that, you know, would that be under in order for it to be effective? Uh, well, partly prostates are not necessarily spherical, so it's not an absolute number. But they start saying that if the prostate's over 60 cc's, 60 cubic centimeters, uh, which is about 50% larger than the average prostate, you're starting to get into an area uh, of, um, uh, if you're trying to treat the whole prostate, you're not going to be able to cover the whole prostate. If someone has a, um, a big prostate, but the 
tumor is located near the rectal wall and they want to do focal therapy, then it would still be feasible. Or if it's a, um, a transition zone tumor that's not too far away from the urethra, even though it's a big prostate, you could cover the tumor with a Tulsa Pro. So it's not every big prostate is going to um, be a problem. It's uh, whether or not you want to treat the whole gland, which is sometimes administered, the treatment's administered in that fashion, or whether you're planning to do a focal therapy, and if the target's within range of the, uh, of the HIFU beam. So a couple questions from our audience. Somebody was wondering if there's, HIFU would be better for localized prostate cancer, but you know, as if it's better for like Gleason 7 versus Gleason 9, does it matter the grade of the tumor? Well, you look at the literature, and a lot of the um, protocols have talked about using this for intermediate risk cancer. And I'm not sure exactly why. The, the destructive force is more than capable of destroying higher grade tumors. I think that the when there's new technology coming out, and HIFU is not brand new, but it's relatively new compared to surgery, for example, uh, the uh, people doing the research try and set their um, new technology up for success. And so they go after the tumors that are less likely to have metastasis which makes sense. But if people can confirm that the higher grade tumors, the Gleason 9s and 10s, ACE 9s and 10s, are localized now that we have P uh, PSMA PET scans, I don't see any reason that you can't do HIFU with higher, higher Gleason scores. If you do do HIFU with a higher Gleason score, would a short course hormone therapy also be part of the protocol? Or can you, do you think we could go without that? Well, no one knows. If you have a PSMA PET scan in a high-risk patient that doesn't show any metastasis, uh, the studies that I've seen suggest that the scan will be accurate in about 80% of patients. So men that are, can live with a 20% relapse rate because the PSMA PET scan missed something um, could consider skipping hormone therapy. Um, how much value is there in um, taking, say, an 18-month course of hormone therapy? Well, at most, it's going to cut the risk of relapse by 10%. So if you're going from an 80% to a 90% cure rate and you're willing to pay with 18 to 24 months of uh, hormone therapy, then I guess that's, that's uh, the patient's choice. I don't think that the hormone therapy is going to improve the cure rates in the prostate if someone's having high foo, um, but it could have some benefit if there were micrometastatic disease. And uh, if PSMA PET scan shows that there's no micromets, that there's an 80% chance there's nothing out there, that's pretty good uh, without hormone therapy. Uh, so you can probably improve it somewhat with hormone therapy. And, uh, but it comes at a significant price of side effects, and different people will probably have different attitudes, particularly if someone's more elderly, 75 or 80, I would really hesitate to give them hormone therapy. So you mentioned the possibility of you know, curing it within the prostate. So you consider HIFU and Tulsapro a possible curative therapy? Yes. Uh, the, the high energy beam is more than able to destroy prostate tissue, prostate cancer tissue. So it's all about the skill of the operator and uh, whether or not there are any small specks somewhere else in the body that, of course, don't get addressed with Tulsa Pro or with HIFU. So what about Tulsa Pro and HIFU versus other forms of focal therapy? How do you measure those out? Well, I think all forms of focal therapy, um, they don't lack horsepower to kill tissue. Uh, it's just a matter of the skill of the operator who's using these tools. I'd rather... Uh, have a uh, you know a very skillful doctor who's good at targeting uh, with electroporation or cryo or laser than I would uh, have someone use Tulsa Pro or HIFU if they don't have the, the, the practice and the skills. Doing focal therapy is a real tour de force proposition. Uh, figuring out where the tumor is and how much margin needs to be around it and uh, how to make sure that the, the treatment you're giving accurately treats the section that you're proposing to treat. Um, it's not, it's more than just a do, one doctor. You have a team of people that are working on this, uh, radiologists, and and uh, that is the the, uh, the the tricky part. Is that focal treatment probably still needs to be considered semi-investigational? That they're, they're still in the learning process in how in terms of how to ensure the best outcomes. Now that we have PSMA PET scans, we have even a uh, better handle on assuring ourselves that there's not something on the other side of the gland that we're missing. You know, in the past we've done biopsies, saturation biopsies, MRIs, color dopplers, and uh, that is the, uh, you know, finding the extent of the tumor within the prostate has always been a big challenge, and then 
accurately delivering treatment with a margin is also another challenge. So as far as insurance coverage goes, have you seen this across the board be covered by Medicare? Well, I th- I'm glad you bring that up because uh, the costs of Tulsa Pro and HIFU are quite a bit more. Most of the other options, uh, the traditional options like surgery and radiation are covered by standard insurance. But the uh, laser treatments, Tulsa Pro, HIFU, Many times there's a large out-of-pocket expense as the insurance companies will pay maybe a portion of it or not any of it. So I know that, you know, Tulsa Pro and HIFU, obviously, as you explained, work similarly, but if you had to choose between one or the other, would it purely be based off of the experience of the uh, doctor or is there another factor you would take into play? Yeah, if I have some personal knowledge that a, a specific individual has real talent and skills, I'm much less concerned about which tool he wants to use. I want him to use a tool he's familiar with using. The Tulsa Pro technology um, is kind of um, intriguing because they're doing it in an MRI, so they're able to visualize with one of the better tools that we have for seeing cancer, MRI, while they're doing the treatment. So it does suggest that the technology is going to aid the physicians in doing a better job But if a doctor already has experience with his own methodology and is getting good results, I just stick with that. So let's talk about that for a minute. Oftentimes we get asked on our channel, how do we find a doctor? So we've talked about reading reviews online from patients, how many papers have this you know, doctor, have they done any research work in this? Um, and then also how many procedures. So how many procedures for Tulsa Pro and HIFU would you suggest a patient look for? Like how many has this doctor done? Oh, I'd say at least 25 to 50 minimum. Um, probably the most important thing I think is to try and find um, if a family doctor or, or a urologist or a radiation therapist who's got familiarity with the physician doing these focal therapies and has seen how their patients have turned out over time. I think that is the most reliable uh, way because, uh, you know, I have patients come in and say, well, you know, my gardener went to so-and-so and he had a good result. Well, that's just one patient. We really want uh, doctors that can uh, consistently get great results time after time. And the only people that have that type of exposure are you know, like referring physicians, family doctors, and whatnot, where they've sent a sequence of patients to a specific physician and they've been consistently pleased with the results. I know another form um, that patients have been using is like online Facebook groups and support groups to try to find consistent testimonies of those physicians. That's been really helpful. Yeah. So my last question is regarding follow-up and PSA declines. So what should the PSA look like? Um, maybe two weeks out versus two months out versus two years out? And then what would the follow-up scanning look like as well? Well, it's certainly going to depend on uh, whether they did a focal treatment or a whole prostate treatment. Uh, the focal treatments, you can calculate with scans how much prostate normal prostate t- tissue was left behind. And then you can divide that by 10, and that's the average PSA that you would expect. In our patients that have had focal treatment, we treat their untreated prostates uh, the same way we treat men who are on active surveillance. So we get a MRI once a year, a collar Doppler once a year, check their PSA twice a year. And uh, that's because they can have uh, new cancers that show up in the untreated uh, prostate, or they, if the doctor missed uh, some of the cancer, we want to detect it at, at an early stage. Men that have had their whole prostate treated with HIFU should have very low PSAs, less than 0.5 and it should remain steady in that range. And how long does it take to get there? It goes pretty quick. I would say uh, with radiation, sometimes it'll take a year or more for the PSA to uh, drift down to the really low levels. But with HIFU, the um, PSA should be very low within three to six months. Thanks for watching. If you would like more information about prostate cancer, you can go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with new prostate cancer videos every week. And go ahead and visit our website, pcri.org. We have tons of information on prostate cancer that will help you.